Hello, hello, and welcome to One Place Guide to War and Magic Kingdom Reborn. This game has a double identity of a typical town management sim and the heroes of Might and Magic's successor. So, how can you find the perfect balance between those two very different kinds of gameplay? We'll help you out with that and share a couple of tips on developing your domain and dominating the battlefield. Let's go! Now, War and Magic doesn't spare you the dramatism and plunges you straight into the eye of the storm with a looming global threat. The evil forces are threatening the land and you are the only somewhat formidable power left. So it's up to you to oppose them. Your mighty quest is essentially divided in three parts. City development, exploration and combat. For those who have already played um, all kinds of city management simulators like Forge of Empires, Lords Mobile, there won't be a lot of new things in here really. You have your Lord, of course, here. Then there are all kinds of resources like gold, um, food, wood, that are used for purely operational stuff. Like you would consume resources whenever you recruit new troops or whenever you build something and the gold is used to speed things up, of course. Then you have all kinds of special offers, let's put it this way, some global updates on how the other players are doing and of course all kinds of special events, challenges and so on. Below here you have a quest log suggesting uh, what kind of activities you might want to try in the game for an extra reward um, that you see here. But all the quests that you have completed, either intentionally or by chance, will appear over there, as, as well as their progress, and you can claim your rewards later on. Then there's the alliance, of course, you can apply for one, you can create one yourself, and others can invite you in, of course. Next thing is your inventory where you will see all kinds of vouchers for resources or your VIP level, speed ups that help with recruitment, production, research, then cosmetics, let's put it like that, and boosts, the chests that you might find, uh, the merchant stand, or when you're exploring outside or part of, as part of your daily rewards, and then, of course, others such as shots for your beasts or other troops or your reputation, the teleportation, so all kinds of possibilities in different planes of the game, so to say. The process here is fairly straightforward, right? You have the main building, the city hall, then uh, the resource buildings such as farms and sawmills right here and utilitary buildings like a forge, an academy, um, the healing tents and the hospitals and of course the uh, aforementioned merchants shop plus the rally point where you can gather and improve your troops and of course some nice freebies falling down from traveling merchants every now and then and we have already mentioned that this game tries to somewhat incorporate the mechanics of uh, the Heroes of Mind Magic series and this is where you might see that here is for example a portal that you can use uh, to go outside and explore the world around you, so to say, but in a more up close, at a more up close scale. We'll we'll get back to that a bit later on. Another approach that you may not see in other simulator games is that all 
kinds of troops, they have the designated buildings where you can recruit them. Like in Heroes of Might and Magic, so for example here we can recruit knights. In the monastery we recruit priestesses. All kinds of, uh, let's put it like this, otherworldly troops can be recruited in this void gate. Like skeletal warriors, dwarven fighters, vampires, all kinds of things. And of course, just like in Heroes of Might and Magic, you have a tavern where you can find and hire new heroes. And of course, send your kind of adventure team on all sorts of quests to collect more resources, both material and non-material, like reputation. While it is not as rich, perhaps, as in Heroes of Might and Magic, just like in that series, you can also customize um, to a limited extent and assign all sorts of equipment to your heroes. For example, there are a lot of interesting things happening in this kind of detailed kingdom view. There's this peculiar fellow that will occasionally quiz you on the game lore or let's say all kinds of functions and activity in the game. Like that. And give you resources. And even if you don't answer right, it's a good way to stock up on the resources and you know just to um, learn new things about the game the easy way. Then of course just like several types of buildings and all kinds of castles in Heroes of Might and Magic, you have beasts that can be summoned from the beast lair in this particular game. I find this probably the most interesting part of the game because beasts are incredible assets. We will also dive into that a bit later on. Couple of tips. This is a very heavily combat oriented game so to say so i would just constantly stay on the recruitment phase occasionally i would also spend some gold on it but you have to watch the balance closely so that you don't get carried away because gold is actually not as easy to obtain especially later on as you progress then of course you also might be tempted when when researching to try to aim for the most advanced stuff but I can definitely tell you please first invest in the basics it won't only help you to get more advanced things in the future but as I said will be an incredible aid on the battlefield because every single percentage that you can add to your stats can definitely be a decisive point so to say. So the overall philosophy is keep spawning troops, do not hesitate to research everything you can, especially at the basic stages, and of course try to use any opportunity to bolster things or to speed them up. I'm talking about building particular buildings, excuse the tautology like the uh, great tent here that increases the recruitment speed. So while we're having our troops in training, things upgrading, let's venture off through the portal and talk about the exploration part. Now, through the gate of fate, you will venture off into a very kind of nearby territory, pretty close to um, the gate that you're going to get out of. So it's not going to be um, a super vast space on the chain of portals like in Heroes of Might and Magic. It's rather limited, but it looks very similar to um, the game that it drew inspiration from. Let's put it like this. 
So, all right, we are supposed to be... Ah, we're here. Right near this small village. So, just like in Heroes of Might Magic, we have all kinds of shrines, locations, dungeons, and just travel around the map, um, collecting some buffs, perhaps maybe a gang of elf archers will decide to join your company because they are so impressed by your leadership skills, or you might stumble upon some ruins with hidden treasure. And of course, there's always this choice between taking some gold or gaining some experience. In this case, it's going to be reputation. So for those who are familiar with the Here's the Might Magic series, this is going to be a walk in the park. It's uh, super familiar. The only difference is every single outage like that through portal it has um, a particular goal or like a specific quest so to say so in this little village here for example there was an ambush where the necromancer and the werewolf beast attacked us in the name of that dark lord but there is another type of exploration which is the world map this is a very similar activity, but it has a much heavier focus on PvP and cultivation of the surrounding territories. For example, we can... build a water wheel. Right here, near our castle. And, of course, scout the other um, cities to get intel on the lords and their defenses and so to say. But right now, since we're considered a beginner, so to say, we're not going to do that. But you can absolutely do treasure hunts or go to all kinds of shrines, for example, the Rock of Ages where you could... Oh, this looks so cool, flying on the dragon. Where you could get additional experience. If it's not entirely full, then of course you can check out the enemies on the map and maybe get some experience from an encounter. Oh, I was hoping that somebody would join our merry gang and do all kinds of things. The fountains of vigor, they replenish your stamina. The ancient temples, they heal. The exploration crew, in case anybody, uh, any troops that you have in your company have been wounded. So you can do all kinds of stuff in here. As you can see, our city is gleaming red, which means we are currently under a siege. Whenever that happens, it's never a bad idea to speed up any recruitment campaigns that you currently have on. Then give your hero some more of those troops and venture off into battle. So as you can see from our enemy forces breakdown, a recommended power is 66,000. We have 70,000. So I would say our chances are not perfect, but we might survive that. Keep in mind that sieges are only one type of the encounters. So as I mentioned above, you can battle with NPCs or other lords in the exploration phases as well. Let's fight! So all the combat starts with the beasts in all of the sides attacking making the first move. Just like in Heroes of Might and Magic you have a battle grid. There are rounds where every troop takes turn 
And besides the basic troop attacks, you can also employ a hero to do some damage or heal the troops, provided that you have enough soul drops that you get from damaging enemy troops like here, for example. There we go. We got three soul drops from that. That was not pleasant at all. If you feel like your company is evidently overpowered, feel free to switch to auto combat and enjoy the fast victory. If you're not feeling overly confident though, you can always use the escape button, but it will result in heavy losses, as the game suggests. So in the end we have been defeated. An overly confident. But that's okay, because we can always heal our troops and pretend that all of that was a bad thing. And get them back. So without proper preparation, and obviously only having one round of recruitment doesn't count as such, you are much less likely to succeed on the battlefield. So how can we make sure that it's actually going to work out for you, no matter what? First of all, you gotta pay attention to the formation. See here. See how they're positioned on the field? And never put a ranged troop, for instance, in, at the vanguard. Because that's not going to make um, any sense in terms of the moves you make as well. Plus, you might want to adjust your combat strategy to, to the special abilities of the skills of your troops. So for example, barely in charge. The further along you move the knight, the more damage it's going to and also boost the morale. Then we have the guard, for example, reduces damage taken by allies in the adjacent six blocks by 12%. Which means if you have a guard in your company, it would make sense to move more vulnerable troops like priestesses a little bit closer to the guards. And of course, finally, you have to work with your beasts. You have to get them and upgrade them. As you could see at the very beginning of that battle, initially my Hell Dragon, it did quite a considerable amount of damage to all of the enemy troops. Beasts can be tremendous help on the battlefield and they have vast skill trees. I mean, look at all those talents which means you can really tweak their stats to your playstyle and compensate for some of the weaker points. Finally, always see what kind of hero works the best for you. Is it a mage? Is it a panda warrior? Is it a shaman? Is it some kind of Spartan warrior? If we check back into the tavern, you you will see that there are so many of them available and and as you upgrade the tavern and the city hall there will be even more ways to obtain them so how you develop your heroes can make it or break it for you in the battle and as i mentioned this is a rather combat centered game so you will not regret spending a bit more time studying how to create a powerful hero troops beast combo and that was our rundown of War and Magic. Hope you'll enjoy the game! Join our Wombat Gamers Discord server and be on the lookout for more guides and let's plays. And check back on Wombly for more games! Stay playing and slaying! Ciao!